What's up you guys? Today we are going to have a cool video. This is going to be a really cool experience for me because it's a car I've always dreamt of driving, especially since I got my 430 Scuderia. It is another 430, but a slightly different one. It is also a Scuderia, but it's what we call a 16M Scuderia. And there's one main difference, which is the lack of a roof. This is effectively a convertible version of the Scud. Very rare car. I'll explain talk about that a bit more in the in a little bit but first of all let's talk about this spec because it is a beautiful spec and a rare spec on this car so it's finished in this beautiful yellow which looks really cool and at one point I was thinking about wrapping my car yellow I quite like the gray the dark look on mine so I'm gonna leave it like that for now but it is very nice to see what it looks like in yellow like this it does look quite different without the roof it, it kind of breaks up the lines quite nicely and obviously the design is quite different especially around back around front it's pretty similar they haven't really changed anything on the 16M compared to the Scuderia. It's effectively the same design and mechanically it's the same car. So we'll talk about that when we get round back. The only thing that's quite noticeable around front is that these lights are a lot darker. So everything inside is finished in a much darker color and it gives them a slightly more modern and aggressive look. And I actually really like the way that looks. I don't think I've ever seen a Scud coupe with those lights, um, but it does look awesome. So that's pretty cool to see. And then it, it, this one's actually got the option of having the painted stripes like I've got on mine, which is quite an expensive option. Uh, carbon fiber around front right there in the middle. This one's actually got the scooter rear wheels. It hasn't got the 16M wheels, which are a different design. Finished in dark gray. Looks really nice actually, because I think these wheels are, are a nicer design. I am a bit biased probably, but I do think they are a slightly prettier design. We've then got obviously right here, oops, sorry, my shadow, the 16M Scuderia logo with the Ferrari logo up there. That's new, so you don't usually have that on the uh, Scud, so that's quite an easy way to tell. We'll talk about the interior spec in a second. When you come around back, obviously that's where it changes a lot. So, you know, based on the spider look, you've got still access to the engine. So you can see the engine full carbon, and that is still the naturally aspirated V8, sorry, I was about to say V10, the naturally aspirated V8, 510 horsepower engine. Beautiful, beautiful engine, coupled to a single clutch gearbox, which does still work quite well. It's no double clutch, of course, like performs completely differently, but still a great gearbox, the F1 gearbox. And then, yeah, around back is just a lot of carbon fiber. Also, by the way, I'm gonna mention I cut my finger so if ever you see this during the day I don't know why they went so big and gave me this massive plaster but I've got to keep this on for two days so if ever you see me driving around I know there will be some comments about that but um, yeah anyways back round back you got the carbon fiber there carbon fiber on the diffuser and that's basically all the same as on my car on the Scuderia Coupe but then you've got this little F1 Constructors 16 World Championship so that is because this car was made to commemorate and celebrate 16 World Championships for Ferrari in Formula One. Now when you open it, one thing I do notice is that the door handle is not carbon fiber, which it is on my car. So I don't know if this is spec only for this car, if that's on all 16Ms. But then once you get inside, it's exactly the same. So the door's completely finished in carbon. Everything, all the carbon bits come standard on these. It has got a slightly different speaker here, JBL speaker. So I don't know if that was an option or it comes standard on the 16Ms. And then when you get around the interior, it is pretty similar to mine. This one's got yellow stitching as mine does, but this time it's black Alcantara, whereas mine is gray, but it looks pretty cool actually. I really like the black Alcantara. But then where things get a little bit different, so it's all Alcantara on the top half of the interior, but then when you get to the bottom half, it all switches to leather. So if I move so that my shadow's out of the way, you can see that all of that there, is leather, you can see my finger as well. <laughs> All of that's leather with yellow stitching. And the seats themselves are also finished in leather. And that's quite different because mine is all Alcantara all the way up here and then this weird material in the center and I actually quite like the way it looks the leather it's very rare I haven't really seen one before but it means that it actually doesn't wear quite as much you can't see it worn as much this car's only got 17,000 kilometers so maybe like 11 or 12,000 miles so it's got really low mileage for a 2008 car but looks fantastic this one's also got the belts like in mine same thing though finished in black Alcantara rather than gray Alcantara and then the leather continues all the way around back here awesome car one difference compared to mine is it's got the flappy paddles the small carbon fiber flappy paddles i've got some bigger aftermarket ones but these are the original ferrari ones which i actually still have for mine i just have the aftermarket ones on in the car and then a plaque right there which shows you that this car is limited to 499 pieces worldwide which coincidentally is actually the exact same number of laferraris 
that were made in theory. Bro, you never quite know. But yeah, so 499 worldwide means that this car is basically double the price of a coupe. And that is purely down to the limited aspect of how many they've made. And yeah, I mean, it's gonna be really interesting for me to see how much of an experience change it is compared to my car to drive this around without the roof. Because mechanically, as I've said, exactly the same car. This one does have a stock exhaust, so it's not gonna be quite as loud with the roof off. I don't think you need it to be. It would be too loud probably for my exhaust. Ooh, I, I apologize for the wind noise if there is any. Before the wind gets too, too strong and I freeze, why don't we hop in the car and give it a go? So here we are then, me and my bad finger in a 16M. This has always been a dream. And ever since I got the Scud, I've wanted to try one of these out. It already feels like a bit more of a sense of occasion having no roof above you and it takes some getting used to having the small paddles that's the initial first feeling but I mean that's not a 16M special that's just all scuds but yeah it does take some getting used to having these these small paddles and also having this massive finger but yeah I mean oh, every time I get into one of these in my car Spider or just a 48 GT 
it's nuts how all they've done really is gone and riddled the roof and it feels that little bit more special which adds so much drama to the experience is it worth double the money i mean if you're into collecting and collectors items potentially as a driving experience you know it's very similar so it doesn't quite warrant the uh the difference in price but Special. This isn't going to be a particularly long drive, but it felt like something that would be a shame not to share with you guys. Wow, I really, really like this car. But to be honest, I think I'm going to save my 150 grand, 200 grand, or whatever extra, and just crack the window in the tunnels. Because while it does add drama, the Scud is still such a special car. And in this spec, I really like it. The seats actually feel different because they're uh, finished in leather. It feels somewhat more comfortable, a little bit less sticky. Roof down, Ferrari, naturally aspirated V8. It doesn't get much better than this, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, short little tour of this car, and I look forward to making more videos with a very similar car, my 430 Coupe in Monaco. But yeah, thank you Carogatti who lent me this car. They, they're always so, so kind and, and provide me with some really nice rides such as this. So thank you to them. Give them a follow on Instagram. I'll put it, put it down below and I'll catch up with you guys again.